finally getting a convertible that has the style, the performance. BMW of Wesley Chapel has given us the 2022 BMW M440i in your Dravid gray metallic. No more manuals. The coupe is available in rear wheel drive. The sporty Beamer gets standard ambient lighting inside with perforated Syntec room for four. A large kidney grille goes after rivals like your Audi S5, your Mercedes AMG C43, a Genesis G70, even a Kia Stinger GT2. With all of these vehicles in the mix, which one is going to be the best in the sense of getting the most vitamin D? Because Genesis, Kia, they don't make a convertible. So you already can eliminate those two. And then for performance, near perfect 50-50 weight distribution. You're not gonna get that in an Audi or a Benz. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. BMW M440i stresses performance, and they're gonna start with the aerodynamics, with the active kidney grille. This is the enlarged one above it. You're getting the 50 year badging for the BMW, and I like how it just brushes up into these adaptive LED headlamps with BMW laser, brushing into your M Sport bumpers with functional side curtains and on the lower lip. Ground clearance over five inches, so you can go over speed bumps and you don't have to worry pairing it to a Mercedes AMG C43, that's not gonna be the case. So you already have a little bit better ground clearance. And I also like how it pushes out your fenders, encasing these 19 inch five double spoke with the M brakes. It's a four piston in the front, single piston for the rear, 15.7 inch in the front disc, 15 inch on the rear. It's ventilated, aluminum front subframe with aluminum suspension arms, double joint spring strut, five link rear suspension. Weight distribution at 50.5 and 49.5. You'll have stiffer springs and dampers. Side view mirror housing gets the silver in the gloss underneath it. So it gives a little bit of a two tone. The gloss black is going to wrap around the convertible top. A more dramatic exit, standard M sport differential, M suspension. It's around four inches longer than the Mercedes at 188 inches. It's also longer than the Audi. The Stinger or the Genesis will be the longest, a wheelbase at 112.2 inches. And the curvature that goes into the rear stresses these M sport bumpers. I like the 50 year badging in the center going inside to 12 cubic feet of storage, curb weight at 52.6 to 47.4, two storage tiers, one on each side. This is an inline six M twin power turbo vehicle that has performance that's insane for the price point. Let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust note. BMW M440i definitely has the exhaust note. With the top down, you got the style that just makes it look beautiful in a hot atmosphere. And what I do like about the BMW, comparing it to the rivals, is when you pull up to a red light with this vehicle, you're going to know the performance because they back it with a 3.0 liter BMW M twin power turbo inline six cylinder, producing 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. That's paired to a ZF8 speed automatic transmission achieving 23 to 31 MPGs. A quarter mile at 12.3 seconds, which beats everybody. If you're looking for the best horsepower and torque, this is gonna beat the Audi. This will beat the Kia and Genesis and torque. It's going to be just a touch less than the all new C43, which you can only option that as a two-door coupe or convertible. With the four, 
you could do a lot of different fits. So you have a lot of performance underneath it. You have a lot of different ways you can tailor it to make it however you want. And for me, convertible is where it's at. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 BMW M440i as we go into the interior, go over the tech and take this for our test. inside the BMW M440i, you're gonna receive 38 inches of headroom, 35.2 inches of leg room, Cognac, Sensitec, perforated seats. We got 12-way power adjustment for the driver, eight-way power adjustment for the passenger. They are heated. What I do like is you got the manual cushion extensions as well. So that way it actually makes it better for tall people like me because this is going to be the least in leg room and headroom for the front seats comparing it to the rivals. The dashboard is your standard BMW dashboard with your 12.3 touchscreen in the center with the gloss black. We do not have gesture, but we do have the pinch and the swipe. Click the home button so you can see all the apps in which we have. This you could just toggle through. These are quick apps that come standard. When you click onto the apps, you can see we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, scroll it down, Amazon Alexa, click back into the home, go into your car settings, driving information. You can change your displays to make it more sporty in the center. And you can also configure your driving modes from standard, individual. You can configure it as well to make it more eco-friendly for you, for your comfort and your sport, which you can also configure to make it as sport derived as you like. Double click on that and you got that. Switch to reverse, we have a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory with the grid lines. You also have your automatic parking and your backup assist, which is really nice because when you put it into gear, when you click this and turn it on, as you're seeing, we move up, it's telling you how many feet. Now when you put it into reverse, all you have to do is hold the brake and it will back up exactly the amount of feet that you went forward with the steering as long as you hold or push the brake when it comes to zero. Your 3D view, which you can toggle through this way on your right side. You can't do anything here. If you had the gesture, you would be able to move your fingers this way or that way so you can actually move the camera. Click back into here and you have your car wash. This is really good because it has the lines. So that way you're not gonna have to worry about hitting anything. It does make it easy to pull into the car wash. Working underneath it, you'll have your air vents that's gonna be outlined in the silver. And I like how it brushes next to the door panels with that silver in the gloss black that's going to be on the driver's side, but not the passenger side. So it just gives a little bit more sport preference and it's a little bit driver focused because it's about 0.7 inches towards the driver, even though you wouldn't necessarily know that in the passenger seat. Working down, open that up in a cup holder with a 16.9 ounce I'll fit without any issues. No wireless charging pad, but a 12 volt and a USB. You have the wood inlays that's going to go around your lever that's in the gloss black. You got the iDrive 7. It's non-touch, but you have voice recognition. So you don't necessarily need touch here because you got touch screen there and you can just push that button and talk to the system. Open this up and you're gonna get another USB port. It's a little bit of storage. It's not too bad. It's gonna be more sport derived. Leather wrap steering wheel. This is M spec. It's heated multi-function with the paddle shifters. For the gauge cluster, we have it in Eco Pro, which changes the tachometer so you can get better coaching for your gas consumption. Click into the comfort. It's going to change it again. You'll still see the power percentage on your right side. And then when you click it into sport, you're just ready for full round throttle. Let's push the gas and you can see what I mean by that. It does go through an array of information. You can see your MPGs. You can see your pound feet of torque or horsepower, your G-force meter, your audio sound system, heads up display with the sign recognition. And when you change the modes, you'll see a blue for eco, a green for comfort, and a red for sport. Door panel is gonna get the Contrast stitching on the top. You'll get the silver memory seat for the driver. One touch up and down for all the windows and the storage pocket is actually pretty large. I would say you could fit at least two or three 16.9 ounce water bottles. I fit pretty comfortable because the seats are a bit more wide when you get into the M Sport vehicles. When you go full blown M, it's gonna be a little bit more tight. And I also like the fact that we have a convertible top. So let's put a 
Let's actually leave it up now that I think about it so we can see how I look in the back. For the back seat, I'm at 35.2 inches of headroom, 34.5 inches of legroom, which is the best in class unless you're comparing it against the Genesis or the Kia. The only disadvantage is because it bulges inwards, I really don't have anywhere I can rest my arm. Cup holder is a 16.9 ounce, fits with no issues. I have a third climate control with two USB-C ports and storage behind both of the front seats. Can I fit? Yes. I would probably put this center down and lose the cup holders so that way I can actually sit a little bit more comfortable. You can also fold this seat completely down which is great because if I buy a big screen TV I could actually do that in this vehicle. Sitting two people that's six foot three my dimensions can be done. Is it going to be tight? Yes. Put the top down it'll be perfect. Taking the 2022 BMW M440i out for a test run. 382 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. I'm gonna see how well she does. We're going to just give her a little go. And brakes, lovely. And you get the exhaust note that filters in. Whoa, it is beautiful. Quarter mile is the fastest, just a touch over 12 seconds. And this is a 70 grand vehicle. So let's just stop right here so we can really see, because this, you just have to see it, look. It's lovely. You feel it, and that's one thing I will say when I tested the S5, and I've driven a lot of them, I really do like the Cabriolet on that. It just, the torque isn't as much as this. So it actually really does push you back further in the dynamics. I mean, look at this. That's what a near 50-50 weight distribution does to a vehicle. You're not going to get the same hugging mentality in the other vehicle. So I do like that. Comparing it against the Genesis or the Kia, both two of those are pretty good twin turbo engines. You really can't go wrong, but the performance on this, you got the M Sport in it, so you have something to back it. So I do like what we're working with. Visibility in the front is awesome. The eight pillars are small. And I mean, when you're in sport mode, you can just kind of play around. Now, when I put it into Eco, you're going to notice the steering wheel now is ever so artificial. All of a sudden, I don't hear any noise at all, except for the exterior wind noise that's pretty much through the wheel wells. Comfort level is good because you're not really sitting that low to the ground, even though you project that you are. So you feel some of the bumps, but the seat cushioning actually does a really good job. I wish it was a little bit more power seat adjustments and I can't see the heads up display because I have polarized glasses. As for looking behind, there is a significant amount of blind spot, but you got blind spot monitoring and all the power that's underneath the hood of this, I don't think you're gonna have to worry too much about blind spot. We're going to be as quick as possible because there's a lot of cars coming, so stopping in the middle of the road is a little difficult. Here we go. BMW just does an excellent job with the horsepower torque, the way it's delivered inside the cabin. Turn radius, more or less a stop point. We have it in comfort mode, about two lanes. In comfort mode, it feels very similar to the Audi S5 with the way the performance is distributed through the cabin of the vehicle. When you push hard on it, it just has more of a luxury than sporty feel, whereas when you put it into the sport mode, it just bites you. Okay, we got the top down. We're going to stop right here in the middle of the road. Here we go. I would be lying to you if I'm not enjoying the vehicle because I really am. I'm gonna put these side windows up so that way it filters out some of the sound. And I will say it's 
pretty spot on with Mercedes line. When you get into the Cabriolets, they do a good job in filtering out the noise. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this M440i. The three things that I like that starts off with is it is a convertible. They have the rear wheel option. The second thing that I like about the vehicle, it is the best in class for horsepower and torque unless you're comparing this to the new AMG C43. And that is obviously because it's the new AMG C43. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is how precise it is. When you are doing your dynamic turns, as you are seeing, if you're trying to get a little aggressive, even in the rear wheel drive, the thing hugs itself perfect, near 50-50 weight distribution. Three things that I dislike starts off with the auto start stop. If you're in sport mode, it disengages. Otherwise, you really can't disengage the feature. There's no more a button. The second thing that I dislike about the vehicle goes to the back seats because how broad the shoulders are for the rear. It goes inside the panel and pushes you, kind of squeezing you. So if they maybe move the seats like four or five inches over and gave a little bit of a lip to rest your arms, it would be spot on. The last thing that I dislike is the dash layout. They have the wood, they got the gloss, they got the silver, they got the Sensatec. They just got a lot going on. I wish they would just put maybe a carbon fiber and just call it a day because it would blend in a little bit better with that silver. But for a performance vehicle, it's hard to find any negativity in these vehicles because there's a lot of bells and whistles that just make you like it a lot more. And I mean, look, this is at uh, two RPM. And it's lovely. The fact that you can even fold the rear bench all the way down and you can put larger items in it, it just makes this so much more user friendly and a daily driven vehicle, which is something that I really enjoy. And the fact that it's a convertible because convertibles are a dying breed. No manual transmissions are available anymore, but I mean, I can let a few things slide when it comes to a convertible package.